Good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, tonight's webinar on the steps to university in America. And we are going to take you through 60 minutes of just realities of what you need to do and the steps that you need to take to have success in, in getting a scholarship to play tennis in the United States. So we are going to begin. Uh, I want you to notice in the chat box that we have provided, it says to that we have muted all participants and that we ask that you turn off all the cameras just so this webinar is as efficient as possible. And also there is a chat box there. We have a habilitated the chat box during the webinar, which will be approximately 60 minutes in, in, in total. We are going to leave some time at the end for uh, questions. So please, as we're moving uh, forward in the webinar, if you have any questions, just put them right there in the chat box and we will uh, handle them uh, or try to handle as many questions as we can by the end of, of the webinar. So let's get started. Before we get started, I would like to thank some people that made this possible. I see we have a nice group of, of, of players uh, in this webinar tonight. So let me just uh, reach out and thank Richard Glover, the CEO of Tennis of South Africa. Um, Jeff, I hope I'm saying your name correctly, Hetsi, Director of Tennis of South Africa. And also Ryan Fitzwilliam that has been in contact with both of them uh, to make this happen. So if you are getting you know, access and information to what we're going to provide tonight. It is a real treat brought to you by several people that have worked together to make this happen. And we just, we just thank them and, and hope that the time that you're going to spend here will be very valuable towards the future of your son or daughter or yourself is, if you're listening. One thing very important, Ryan Fitzwilliam actually was my coach, my college tennis coach back in the University of Louisiana Lafayette. He is a great tennis player. I know this for a fact because he has beaten me several times quite easily. And uh, well, uh, Ryan, you know, through through him being a college tennis coach and his involvement with a tennis in South Africa, reached out to 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 me years later and to us on how he could work with Tennis South Africa and just to bring the best opportunity possible to many many players out there. So we hope that this relationship, not only with Ryan, but Tennis South Africa is gonna change the lives of many families, not only this year, for, but for, you know, for years to come and, and generations to come. So thank you again, Richard, Jeff, and certainly Ryan for making this possible. So let's get started with the first thing I wanna talk about today is a lot of people do not know that there's over a million international students that were reported uh, in the United States in the year 2019. This is a number that most people are, are not aware of. It, it really is a large number. International students make up 5.5% of the entire university student population in the United States. Let's talk about student athletes because that's what we're talking about here. Uh, but there are 60,000 students competing in NAIA schools. 460,000 students competing at the junior college level, and I mean, at the NCAA level, I'm sorry about that, and 60,000 students competing at the junior college level. Now let's break that up a little bit into tennis. The numbers for a lot of people are very surprising. Um, if you notice there, I'm not gonna go through each one, but there are 921 men's tennis teams, and there are 1,109 women's tennis teams, wow. That is a lot more women's tennis teams. So I know there's women out there saying there is a greater opportunity for us, and there certainly is. But there is just so many opportunities out there at the Division I, Division II, Division III, NAI, junior college level. So if you're listening to this webinar, the first thing that I wanna, I wanna break out to you is that there is an opportunity for you, just like there's been for you know, hundreds and thousands of other tennis players from all over the world. If you're thinking, well, there might not be an opportunity for me, just look at these numbers. Uh, there's so many opportunities out there for kids that have, you know, have different tennis levels, whether it be 
you know, uh, the number one player in the country to the number 300 player in the country. There really is different opportunities for kids at different levels. And also they have different academic, economic uh, backgrounds. So there really is an opportunity out there for many, many, many families. So I hope this is a real eye opener for you. The next thing I wanna, I wanna talk about is, is the percentage of international student athletes that are competing in schools. So look at the sport of tennis. In men's division one, they're 63%. Okay, this is, this is when, I, when I first looked at these stats, uh, and my staff sent me these stats, I was, I was blown away. 63% of tennis players in the United States are international. 62% of those are women. I'm talking about division one schools, and we're not gonna get a whole, into divisions a whole lot today because we, don't, we only have 60 minutes, but that is a huge percentage of international students that are in this country playing college tennis. So again, lots of schools out there, lots of opportunities, lots of internationals coming. Uh, coaches want international players clearly by the statistics. So the question becomes is, what are you doing to get your opportunity? Uh, the opportunity is there. You just have to take action to find it. Let's talk about Division Two. Again, the numbers are, are, are pretty amazing. 58% uh, for men and 38% of women at Division Two. Well, that's still one out of every two, one out of every three players competing in tennis in this country are from some sort of, of country. So uh, international in general. And so this is just, again, astounding. And I hope that this motivates you to say, okay, um, this opportunity is not just for the top kid. It's not just for the number one player. It's not just for the kid that got lucky. It really is for the family that understands the process and takes action to find one of these opportunities. And that's what we're going to help you do here tonight. So some pictures are on the screen and here it's, I, I, we need to get to know each other if we're gonna be on this webinar for about 60 minutes. Who am I? Why am I here? How did I get here? So I just wanna very briefly tell you who I am so that I'm no, I'm no mystery guy on the internet that <laughs> you once attended a webinar. So I come from a tennis family. That's actually my father uh, there. Uh, he was born in Mexico. He was a Davis Cup player for Mexico. He actually was recruited to play college tennis in the United States by uh, Division I school, Lamar University. Uh, he had some incredible players in that team. Uh, he actually made it to the finals of the NCAA. And uh, players uh, that went on to have world careers and very known players were actually part of that team. Uh, in the bottom left, you see my picture with a little circle. Uh, I wasn't able to find a picture where Ryan Fitzwilliam, would, would, as the coach, was in that picture. But you get it. I was a college tennis player myself. I got the opportunity to play in college at a Division I school, University of Louisiana Lafayette. And it was just an incredible experience in general, in every aspect. And I can certainly say that it was, um, it was a focus in making me who I am today and giving me the opportunities that I am today. On the right is my wife, uh, Andrea, who is also a college athlete, both in tennis and soccer. And um, on my, on, you see there our little baby girl, which is one year old. And one of the th reasons I put that other picture up there is because I'm actually an international student. I mean, I was born in Mexico and I got the opportunity to play in college and the education, the opportunity, the culture that studying and playing college tennis in the US gave me is amazing. Everything that I have been able to achieve in my lifetime, besides being the president and CEO of College Prospects of America, an international company that has been helping student athletes for over 30 years, I've been involved with CPOA for over 20 years. I speak across the United States to many other business owners about building their business. I, I'm, I'm in the process of, of, of writing a book. So anyway, what I wanna say is, families ask us all the time, is it worth to come to America? Does it make sense? Should I do this? What I wanna do and the reason I'm putting these pictures out there is because 
Had I not had that opportunity, had I not played college tennis, I am sure uh, my life wouldn't be the same. And I certainly wouldn't have uh, all the opportunities that I have today. So I still, after 20 years of helping other student athletes, have not had one family say, I regret coming to the United States to play college tennis and get an education. So I leave you with that to, again, to motivate you. There's lots of opportunities. Uh, there's lots of student athletes here international. And I'm living proof, Ryan Fitzwilliam is living proof that the opportunity is incredible um, for, for, for many of you who are considering this. So what is my objective? Uh, with the experience, with, with this relationship that we're, we're establishing with, with you, with Tennis South Africa, the objective is to have clarity and action plan during this time. And we're working with Tennis South Africa to make this happen, uh, again, because we want you to have access to information that previously you did not have. Perhaps it was just the lucky ones that were able to to get this opportunity. We want you to have clarity and an action plan. And, and that's why we're gonna be continually uh, not only doing things like that, but posting information on, on, on Tennis South Africa website where you can access this type of, uh, of information. Why? Because you're valuable. I've showed you that a large percentage, over 50, 60% uh, of international tennis players in this country, um, of, of internationals play tennis in this country. So you're valuable. And many of you think, well, Oscar, why is it that with their 63% of all international tennis players, of all tennis players competing in the United States, why are they international? Why do American universities need and want international students? Why are they valuable? And I want to answer you that question. Why are the numbers so strong? And it's very simple because for universities and for college coaches, you are more valuable than you possibly could ever imagine. Well, here's a couple reasons why. One is that every year, international students contribute a huge amount of money to the U.S. economy. Huge. Not only to colleges and universities and the economy of those universities, but also to the United States. All kinds of industries are impacted when international students come to this country, live in this country, and return to this country. There's one million stu international students impacting this country. From tourism, to cafes, to cinemas, to restaurants, to shop, to travel, to hotels, to the airline industry is impacted because you make the decision to come to this country. And not only that, but your parents and other people that are kind of come visit you are going to impact uh, greatly to the economy of this country. Those are economic reasons why the United States wants and needs international students. But there's other reasons that, um, that, that are less in tune with, the, with these three points. One is that statistically, coaches know that international students and athletes have a higher graduation rate and they have better grades. Coaches want students and athletes with better, with good grades. They don't want kids that are gonna flunk and, and have to go back home. They don't want kids that are gonna have to lose the scholarship because of poor grades. And it's proven that international students appreciate that opportunity more, come to this country and strive to stay there those four years and get a great education. So coaches, want that as opposed to someone that's already here and, and perhaps doesn't see the value of, of that opportunity or that school um, or, or, or staying the four years is valid. Why? Because they're already here. So that's a big reason. The other reason is there are many, many other students in South Africa that do not play tennis. Maybe they play soccer. Maybe they play golf. Maybe they play something else. Maybe they don't play anything at all. And they're wanting to come to this country to study. And they actually aren't looking for a scholarship. They may actually just pay. And, and if you think about the whole world, well, well, universities don't have the time or the money to, to market all over the world. So what do they do? They invest in a student athlete for you to come, represent that school. And guess what? For the rest of your life, you're basically going to be walking marketing for that school 
back in South Africa or wherever it is you go. So for example, me that I played college tennis at University of Louisiana Lafayette, my whole life I've been promoting that school. So if you grab all those international students, that is why the U.S. wants internationals. That is why they want to say we have students from all over the world, 50, you know, 250 countries. It, it gives them credibility and it gives them a, a reach to other countries. So these are why you are so, so valuable to schools. And, and it all transforms the numbers. If you can see the slide right here on the screen, uh, and for some reason, if you can't see the slides, please put it on the chat so that I know that, that, that we're not transferring uh, correctly, but I believe that everything's going okay. So without any type of financial aid or scholarship, college costs between thirty dollars and $40,000 per year. Some schools cost over $60,000 a year. And so let me give you some stats. If you're a, uh, let's just talk tennis players. If you're a tennis player, male tennis player, and you're just an average tennis player. I'm not talking about the number one player in South Africa or perhaps in the top 10. I'm just talking about you are a good, solid tennis player, okay? You're probably statistically, and we know this because we're probably the company that works with more tennis players than any other company in the world from all over the world. So we know what the statistics are. And the statistics are is that most tennis players get some sort of scholarship offer that allows them to pay anywhere around $15,000 a year. That's about $7,500 per semester. Now, the better you are, the better your grades, the less you're gonna play. So certainly there are kids with full scholarships that play, pay $5,000 a year, that pay $10,000. I'm talking about the average tennis player, okay? So, and if you're a woman, because there's more opportunities and there's less women, most women, again, average tennis players, will play about $10,000 a year, $5,000 a semester. So these numbers are not astronomical. It makes a little bit different when you think that those other million students in this country are paying thirty dollars and $40,000 a year. There's many paying $60,000 a year. You have an opportunity that perhaps 1% of the world's population or less has to achieve, which is a reduced education in the United States. Now, women, Yes, there is a lot of women with full scholarships in the United States. Again, I'm talking about the average tennis player. So if you're not the average tennis player, if you're a lot better, you can do better than this, okay? So these amounts vary depending on different factors. We don't have time to get into all those factors, but what you need to keep in mind is look at these numbers. If your family has the ability to, to pay those numbers, guess what? There is a school for you in the United States. Many families, you're realizing, already spend this much money every year when you add up all your, all your expenses. Now, some of you are saying, no, Oscar, I don't, I don't spend $15,000 or $10,000 a year in my son's education. Well, let's do a little math for a second. How much do tennis tournaments cost? How much does the club cost? How much does the coach cost? How much do strings cost? Shoes, clothes, travel. Education, eating, food. If he studies or she studies at a private school, that costs money. So when you add all the costs up, most families say, you know what? It actually costs me a similar amount of money to send my kid to America, my son or daughter to America, than to, than to, than to stay in my country. And this is a big eye opener for a lot of, a lot of people. So many families already spend this much money every year when you add all the expenses. Point here, why did, why did I give you these statistics? I could have just been on here and say, all kids in the United States get a full scholarship and, and moved on with my day. But again, this is about being objective and about giving you the correct information. And here's the reality. You do not need a 100% full scholarship to study in the United States. Some of you will get a full scholarship. But for most of you who are not the top player in South Africa, coming to this country is 100% attainable because I have shown you what most families pay. And a lot of the families listening to this have that financial ability and much, much, much more. There's families that could pay a lot more than that. So, what's, so what I wanna say is your money 
is more valuable for universities and the economy today than ever before. Why do I say that? Because we're right now passing or going, you know, getting through this temporary situation of COVID. And the, the United States and the universities, which people have, you know, gone, gone home, they need you. They really need you now. The economy needs you now. So your money and you are actually more valuable today than before. What does this mean? I'm continually telling people that during this time, there has been opportunities. If you didn't freeze and you go out finding those opportunities. Well, this is one of those opportunities that is coming out from this situation, which is the fact that the universities today need you as an international student more than before. So you're actually more valuable and so is your money. Throughout the webinar, I'm just gonna point out very quickly uh, some people that we're working with from South Africa. Uh, Courtney uh, from Durban, uh, we're actually working with her. She's actually a transfer student who went, came to the United States uh, through another process and uh, um, obviously didn't work out that well. So we're helping her find a, a new university in the United States and uh, she's gonna have success and, and find her another school. And, and uh, so some of you might know her. So how do you take advantage of those opportunities? How do you become one of those 1 million students? How do you become one of those 60% in the United States from international playing college tennis? Well, I'm gonna tell you how you're gonna do that. If you have bargaining power is one, is one way. The more universities that know you exist, the better advice you have, the more offers from universities you will receive. I think we just had technical difficulties there. So um, if, you're, if for some reason you can no longer hear me or for some reason you can't see the slides, please let me know, but I think we're still okay here. So the more universities that, you know, that know you exist and the better advice you have, the more offers from universities you will receive. Also, if you start the process early. So this is a process we recommend starting two or even three years before high school graduation. And a lot that's, that is surprising for a lot of people because of most people, that are uninformed about the process wait till after to the end of their high school graduation to begin the process. Most families, a lot of families actually begin it after they graduate from high school in their country or in South Africa. I'm here to tell you that I'm gonna show you a lot of the ifs. If I tell you have great good advice and you get noticed by many schools, but also if you start the process early. So I'm telling you today that if you're anywhere between one, two, and three years of wanting to come to, the, to America to study, it's time to get started. And I'm going to show you why today you need to do that, because some of you are wondering, I don't understand why. But again, this is a process that you need to start two to three years before graduating from high school to have the optimum results. Also, if you take the SAT and or ACT, and this is, this is something that I wanna, I'm just, again, we don't have time to go through everything about the SAT or ACT, but these are the main points that I felt that you as an audience would want to hear today. One, just to take away some myths, not all, not a requirement at all universities. So the SAT and or the ACT, they're not a requirement at all universities. So that's one big eye opener for more, most families that, that, that listen to a webinar. Because you've been told your whole life, you have to take the SAT, you have to pass the SAT. So I want to be clear. Some schools and some divisions require the SAT. If you do poorly on the SAT, that does not mean you can't come to America. There are many schools and divisions that do not require the SAT. And there are other schools that actually will take the ACT if you do poorly on the SAT and others that don't even care about the ACT. Actually, there are schools 
they don't even care about the SAT or the ACT. So the point that I'm trying to make is within those 1,000 plus universities in this country, there are different opportunities for students of different uh, academic backgrounds. And so don't fall to the myth that you have to uh, take both of these tests or have one of these tests. Don't let it dismotivate you if, for example, you've done poorly in one of them. Now, do we, we ask that you take them. Why? Because the more options you have, the better you do in both of them, the more options you're going to have. But again, it's not a requirement. So what can you do right now to, to start preparing? One of the things you can do right now is study online for the SAT or the ACT. There's various ways to do it. Uh, it's not hard to find. And if you start preparing for those tests today, you won't be scratching your head six months from now, a year from now, two years from now when it's time to take them. Today, when things have slowed down, where there's no tournaments being played, where there's less training going on, when school's not in session, it's the time to use this opportunity to start, to start training for your SAT. It's a great time to do that. Also, be in mind that if you are going or planning on taking the SAT or the ACT, right now there is no test being administered, but they will start again every month, uh, at least for the SAT in August. So prepare today for your results for tomorrow. You can still get recruited in university without an SAT, without an ACT. The point is you got to take action and you have to be aware of the realities. And the earlier you start doing this whole process and the better you prepare, well, the more likely you are going to do well on these tests and therefore have more options. Here's another, per, uh, another player that we're working from uh, with in South Africa, Richard Hartman uh, from Durban again. So Richard is, is, is one of the players that, that we're working with who is, is you know, not the top kid in South Africa, but he has a good level of tennis. He has a good ranking and therefore, what has he done? He's, done, he's taken action, he's doing these steps, he's in our program. And I assure you that there is players better than Richard who are not going to be in the United States um, a year from now or two years from now because they did not take action as opposed to Richard and his family that are already taking action. So again, if there, here's another if. If you get the correct guidance, if you find negotiating power, if you take you know, your tests, if coaches know that you exist, if you start the process early and coaches that you know that you exist early enough. Do you see how this is all starting to make sense? Right now is a great opportunity for coaches to know that you exist. Why? Because right now seasons, schools in America, training has been suspended. So actually coaches have a lot of time on their hands right now to talk to players, to look at videos, to receive emails, to answer back. Right now is a great opportunity for recruiting. And here's, there's other opportunities that open up from this. The players that were right now in the United States because they lost the semester are actually going to gain a semester at the end of the, at the end. This has actually increased the number of allowable scholarships. So there's an opportunity that shows you that schools want you to come back. And so, the NCAA has actually, since April 15th, uh, released the signing date. That means that since April 15th, we have had many, many clients commit scholarship to come in the fall and spring of, two, fall of 2020 or spring of 2021. So if someone's told you, if there's a myth out there that says that things are closed, that things aren't happening, that nothing's going on, that is a complete myth. We are continually told of new scholarship signings every day since the 15th of April of schools that are waiting for student athletes to come in in the fall. Now, when exactly that will be, what date, it, that's, that's still being worked on, but those scholarships are being given away. So the fact is universities will continue to award scholarships while coaches wait. They have the time to right now reach out to you, contact you, look at your video. Now is the time to meet you. Now let's look a little bit at the signing dates. This is what I was talking about. If you look right here, the actual signing date, this is why it's so important to start early. 
if you look at the signing date, if you wanted to go to school in the United States in fall of 2020, that means the 2020, 2021, for the NCAA, the signing date started November 13th, 2019. Some of you are saying, wow, that was last year. That means that coaches starting in November, and of course this got suspended during, throughout COVID, but it's, it's, it started again in April, in, in April, as I mentioned. But the point being is, had none of that happened, in November 13th, usually and historically is when coaches would have started signing scholarships for the upcoming year. That means that this is the date they start making the decision. Okay, very clear on this. This is not the date they start recruiting. This is not the date that they start contacting you. This is not the state that they start looking at exams. This is not the day that they start watching videos. This is the date that they started making decisions on players that they had known since 2017, since 2018, and they had been in contact and had already done the process. So that is how and why you have success the earlier you start, because the earlier a coach knows about you, the more advantage you have other other players, the longer a coach interacts with you, the longer they get to know you, the more likely they are to select you when that signing day comes, especially if you have done all the process. Because coaches on November 13 aren't saying, who do I need to sign that hasn't done anything? They're gonna sign, who do I need to sign that's ready to commit and I know is gonna be eligible to come to the United States to play. So then let's look at 2021, 2022, it's the same thing. Now that we put it into perspective, that signing date for next fall will start November 11th of 2020, according to the NCAA calendar right now. That means that at this point, right now, if you're not getting emails, if you're not talking to college coaches, if you're not moving through the process, if coaches aren't talking to you seriously, guess what? Nothing is happening. You're not moving through, through the recruiting process. So right now is the time to take action if this is you. But if you're a 2022, it's the same story. Because even if you're a 2022, yes, coaches aren't gonna sign you coming this year, but they can already reach out to you and know that you exist and are available for 2022. So point being is coaches, you know, if you're four, 15 years old right now, 16 years old, it's not that coaches are gonna give you a scholarship today. The coaches continually are asking us, look, I'm, I'm looking for that kid or that, you know, that boy or girl that's 15 years old that's going to be a prospect for me three years from now. That's who I want to know. Because many coaches today have already filled their teams for the fall 2020. And there's some coaches that are going to commit for fall 2021 in a few months. So they want to know who those 2022s and who those 2023s are. So point being, mom, dad, son, daughter, it's time to take action if you see this as an opportunity for your life. And there's another if. If you understand F1 student visas. Now, F1 student visas are not rocket science. A lot of families get you know, very uh, concerned and, and, they, and, and they hear a lot of uh, myths and, and, and barriers about the student visas. I gotta tell you, the student visa is actually the easiest part of the process if you've done the rest of the process correctly. That's why it's so important to have uh, you know, a good guidance in this process. Because there's a lot of myths, there's a lot of barriers that, that, that really aren't even true. And families stress out about something that if you've done the process correctly, it's simply one more step in the process. Actually, once a kid gets recruited, we actually aren't that concerned about their visa process because we know that they've done the process correctly if they've been in our program. So just to make us a, some, a couple of quick points here, I know that many embassies, especially in South Africa, everything's suspended right now. This is not a reason not to take action. This is a temporary situation because in other countries and other embassies are already processing F1 visas. And again, this is the absolutely last step of the process. This is the step of the process that you're taking once you're buying your airline ticket, almost to come to the United States once you've been recruited. So do not even worry about the visa situation if you're a 
2021, 2022, 2023. And if you're at 2020, well, you're just going to have to be a little bit patient. And as, as time goes by, uh, you know, those embassies, those consulates will start opening up uh, in more countries. But we have checked in. They've, they've started opening up. So it is just a matter of time. Again, let me point out to you something very important. The economy needs foreigners. The economy needs international students. Universities need and want international students. College coaches have 60% of tennis players that are international playing in this country. You're wanted, you're needed, you're valuable. Right now is the time to take the steps of everything else so that when you're ready, when the embassy's open. So here's the big one. If you actually start the process, so you can know all the information that I told you, but if you don't start the process, there's, a, I love a saying, if you do nothing, nothing will happen. Let me repeat that again. If you do nothing, nothing will happen. You can start the process from the comfort of your home. You can start that today. There's no need, I, I know that there's, there, there's still, you know, that the situation of, uh, in the world going on, but there's no need to visit offices to start this process. There's no need to travel to start this process. All you need to do is from your home say, I'm going to start the process and I'm going to take that first action step. And you can do this whole entire process to come to America from the comfort of your home. So there's no excuse. All there are is myths and barriers that other people or other organizations or other, or other people tell you that exist that really are just myths. So for example, here's another example, Erin from, from Cape Town. Uh, she's you know, top 10 a good student. She's looking for 2022. That's the point. That that's why I put her in here. Because Erin is a 2022. That's when she started our program. That's over two years, almost three years before her high school graduation. She's already started the process. She's already in contact with college coaches. College coaches are already looking at her information. So again, she's an advantage to any other player that has not started this process, even if that player is better. You need to start the process early. She's gonna have great results because of the family's proactiveness in getting started. So some of you say, Oscar, what does it mean to get started? How can I get started today? Uh, you know, how are you saying that I can start this from, from my home? Because I, you know, these are some of the methods that people used to think were the only ways of getting noticed by coaches. One of those ways was traveling, competing in a showcase. That means travel to the United States to some event in Florida that charges you thousands of dollars to bring together 20, 30 college coaches. And you hope that that day the coaches are watching you, you play well, and you hope that somebody looks at you and you hope that you get recruited. And if you don't, well, sorry. Showcases, while very valuable and credible for some families, are a very difficult way to get recruited. Why? Because there's very few coaches present at those shakeways. I told you there's over a thousand college coaches for women's tennis. If there's only 30 or 40 at a showcase, well, the best opportunity for you may never find out that you were at that showcase. And they're very expensive to even travel to this country to do that. But here's the thing, they're closed. This is not even an option right now, okay? Another, another way people used to do it is they used to attend Sports Academy in America, go to Nick Bulletari's, go to, um, or now it's IMG, go to some academy in Florida. Well, again, this is for the very, very wealthy who can afford 60 to $70,000 a year, so they don't even need a scholarship. And again, these options right now are very much closed, very expensive, complicated. And, and here's the thing. Many families choose uh, tennis academies because they feel they're going to get a, a scholarship if they go to a tennis academy. But why don't you ask yourself a very simple question? If I'm talking to a coach and that coach knows that I'm paying fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year to be at a tennis academy in the United States, how can I ask for a scholarship? The coach automatically knows that my family has a high uh, net worth of income. So therefore, that coach is automatically going to assume that I don't need the scholarship. So the reason people use academies, again, not to 
discredit academies, they, they're a great medium for some people who have that financial ability and don't even need a scholarship. But for most, it's a very expensive way to do things. And then there's the other, then there's another uh, myth out there that says that you can come study the last year of high school in the United States um, and, and, and get recruited. Well, here's the thing. If you stay in South Africa and do this process at home, you'll be 10 in the country, 20 in the country, 30 in the country, 40 in the country, 50 in the country. You'll, you'll be someone in South Africa. And I've proven to you that coaches, 60% of students that they recruit are international. So you're more likely to get recruited if you stay in your country than if you come here. Because if you come here, you've proven that you have a lot of money, so you're less likely to get a scholarship. But also, coaches recruit, tennis coaches recruit less from here than international. Does that make sense? I've showed you the statistics, I've showed you the number, okay? So the point being is that why even do that? Not only is it closed, but why even do that? You can do this whole process from the comfort of your home. There are no sporting events to participate in right now, no academies you can, no tournaments where coaches can see you. So how can you do that? Well, I told you that there's a way that you can take action. And, and what it is, is a two door moment. There's two, there's really two doors that people take in my experiences when they have the decision to come to the United States uh, to play college sports or college tennis. There's two doors. One is the door of fear. One is the door of myths. One is the door of panic. Okay, and I'm not even talking about the COVID situation. I'm just talking about mom and dad, they don't have all the answers and therefore there's too many unanswered questions and they have fear, myths, and panic. And all that this results in is inactivity. They decide not to decide. In other words, they don't take action. So, if the, so what I'm saying is if the United States is not for you, if you don't wanna to come to this country to play tennis, that's fine. You're deciding not to make that decision. You're deciding to stay in South Africa, which is perfectly fine. Now, there's other families that say, you know what, I want that opportunity. So they make a step. They take an action that changes their lives. But the worst situation are those that think about it and think about it and think about it. And they think too much about it. And they want every question answered before they take action. This is, the, this is the decision of not deciding an inactivity. And it, all it results in is nothing. Because I can tell you by, by statistics that less than 10% of families start the process if they think about it too much. If they want every single question answered before they start the process, they think about it too much and they actually never start. The, they, they, they're too busy preparing to prepare. Why? Because there's so many myths, barriers, lack of information, too many opinions, fear, uncertainty, money. They go ask everyone that they know. They ask 10 different people to give them advice and they get 10 different answers. And they, they, they actually cost themselves the loss of scholarships, loss of opportunity, loss of valuable time in the process, going through this thinking about situation where they're actually going to everyone and say, what do you think I should do? Or, they want, you know, they, they want the coach to, 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 for everything to be perfect. They want mom for everything to be perfect. They want dad for everything to be perfect. They want the world for it to be perfect. They want money to be perfect. And guess what? Life just isn't perfect. And so my experience is if you ask 10 different people, you get 10 different answers. And here's the thing. It's not about making the decision if you want to come to America today. It's about making the decision if you want to take the first step to have the opportunity to come to America tomorrow. So the door number two is simply the door of taking first action. I know you don't have all the answers, but first action simply is, I'm going to decide that I wanna have that opportunity in the future. So instead of doing nothing, I'm going to do something. What I will tell you is 100% of our clients receive offers from universities in the United States once they're accepted into our program. What does that mean? That means that we only work with, with tennis players that we know we can help. So if we can't help you, we're gonna tell you we can't help you. If we accept you into our, into our program, we already know what, what it takes. We've been doing this for over 30 years. So we know what tennis level, what, we know what you need to have. So 
if you qualify, you're going to get recruited. You're going to get a chance to come to America. It's about taking that action step. So here's the thing. Have you ever heard of how people say, well, he got lucky. He went and got a scholarship. No, no. People don't get scholarships because they got lucky. Okay. They don't get scholarships. They take, get scholarships because they took a first action, some action at some point. Like some of the students actually that I've mentioned. Look, look, mom and dad, uh, Sandy, Mark, whoever's listening to this, you do not need to have all the answers today. Getting recruited in America, if you look at the, that graph, you're right here, step one. There's many steps to take. This is a step-by-step -step process. There's many unanswered questions. It's like a puzzle. And as you move forward in that process, the questions that you've had before start getting answered. And the doubts and myths and fears start getting answered. And that puzzle starts making sense and becoming complete. And before you know it, you're getting recruited and contacted and, 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 and coaches talking to you and making you offers. But it's a step-by-step -step process that unless you live it, it's very hard for you to tell you everything that's going to happen. All we can tell you is these are the these are the things you have to do, and you just have, allow, have to allow the process to, to unfold and, 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 and give you that opportunity. So you only need to decide if you want the opportunity tomorrow. That's my point. So for example, let's say your daughter or your son, let's just call him John. Let's say John says, Dad, I love what Oscar's saying, but I'm not sure that I want to go study in, in America. That it, okay, so here's the thing. 99% of teenagers from anywhere in the world are going to tell you, mom and dad, I'm not sure if I want to study in America. Why? Because they're teenagers. They don't know what they want, a lot of them in their lives at that point. There's, there's emotions and, 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 and all sorts of stuff. So it's, you can't pressure your son and daughter to saying, hey, I need you to decide if you want this. It doesn't work that way. The question is different. It's, hey, look, Johnny, that's fine. I'm not saying that you have to go to America. I'm saying that the question becomes, would you like to have the opportunity to decide if you want to go to America in the future? So if the answer is yes, then you got to take the first action step. Because unless you take that action step, your son or daughter is never going to have, Johnny's never going to have the chance to make that decision. The decision of if you come to America, guess what? Doesn't get made today. That decision gets made when you have a scholarship in hand, when coach is telling you to get on an airplane, when mom and dad are saying bye-bye to you. And at that moment is when you say, I'm deciding to go to America. So here's the thing. There are many student athletes that we work with that do this entire process, have offers and scholarship opportunities to come to the United States, and at the end of the process say, look, I did the process, I have an option waiting for me in America, but I'm deciding to stay in South Africa, or I'm deciding to stay in the UK, or wherever it is they're from. But here's the beauty of that. They had the opportunity. And years down the road, they won't be, won't be one of those those people that say, I wish I had the opportunity, or I never did anything, or mom and dad, you never helped me out. No, I had the opportunity and I decided not to take it. But the reality is that over 90% of those that have the opportunity do take it. Why? Because all those fears and lack of information is basically because fears of lack of information. And as you move through the process and everything makes sense, you have the confidence to come to this country. So before I open it up to, to questions, I just want to want to be clear a little bit of, uh, you know, where it is it that many of you are, and where is it that I would like for you to be. This is why we're working so closely with Ryan, with Tennis South Africa, with with these types of webinars, because many of you right now have too many questions. You have fewer no college options. You're navigating without direction. You have missed the cost barriers. We want you to be in the after. We want you to have all answers to all your questions and doubts. We want you to be able to negotiate and speak correctly with college coaches. We want you to have peace of mind in the process at all times. We want you to have real college opportunities and actually, if you have this opportunity, attain it. And this is something that we've been doing for over 30 years with thousands of athletes from all over the world. Uh, here's actually one that is, is a success story already. Jordan Theron, 
He was recruited by Methodist University. He's from Durban. That's the University in North Carolina. Again, good tennis player, but not in the top 10 in South Africa. Uh, and, you know, good UTR, not, not you know, he's not, uh, he's not the top player. But the point being is he has the opportunity because he took the action step. And there's many other players that probably could beat him that are not having the opportunity because they haven't taken that first action step. So, for, for, so what do we do for you? And before I open up to questions and, and, and answers, it's what do we do for you? If, if you wanted to say, okay, Oscar, I want to take these action steps. How does College Prospects of America help me? What do you do for me? And, it's, and I'm going to just take uh, less than 60 seconds to, get, to take you through that. Uh, we give you on-demand advice and contact with expert CPO advisor. Uh, we've been doing this over 30 years. We do this directly from your home. You navigate the whole college prospects and we help you find the best opportunity literally from your home. You've got internet, you've got WhatsApp, you've got chat, you've got Zoom. You, we give you a lot of those technologies. Why? Because if you're in our program, you're basically in our office. We help you do this entire process. As long as you have internet, a phone, we have a great app, we make this happen for you. And we put you in direct contact with college coaches, okay? It's, it's about college coaches knowing that you exist, about them getting in contact directly with you, communicating directly, and we're simply here to guide both the coach and you to, 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 to make that opportunity possible. And we're a credible A-plus rated company, uh, and we're you know, founded, and we're a U.S. company that just helps kids, kids from all over the world. The process that we're going to help take you to, very simple. I'm not going to go through this. We don't have time. I do want to get to the questions and the answers. Uh, but very simply, we're going to, step one, we're going to help you put your, we're going to put together your profile and your video. Then we're going to market you all over the United States to hundreds of college tennis coaches uh, of your tennis ability and your academic ability and your financial ability. We're going to make sure that the coaches that are a right fit for you know that you exist, they get your profile, that they get your video, and that as many college coaches possible contact you and say, hey, I found out that you exist. We're gonna help you and guide you with every step of the college process. We're gonna help you define and evaluate what are your correct college options. And then we're gonna help you with the college selection. And then we're gonna help you finalize everything that needs to be done for you to come to the United States. But there's more actually. We're gonna help you. We're, our program includes SAT training. It includes helping you navigate the NCAA and the NAI process. And the beauty of this, is that even when you come to the United States, this is a lifetime membership. We're here for you throughout your entire college career. So for example, uh, in the example of, of, uh, that I posted earlier, we're helping uh, someone transfer. I mean, they weren't in our program prior to going to the United States, but let's just pretend that you went to a school, you were there three years, something happened, you needed to transfer, hey, we'll still help you find another school. Perfect, and a last example, Cade Mindry from Durban. He was recruited by Cleveland State University in Ohio. And uh, again, he's a good player, top 10 in the nation, solid ITF, uh, good player. So Cade, this is actually his picture from uh, the website at Cleveland State University. So again, I'm pointing out kids that have had this opportunity or are chasing this opportunity because they've taken the first action step. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but if you do decide that this is right for you, uh, before I go to questions, and uh, this is what it costs, because it's not fair to give you all this and tell you what it doesn't cost. The program that basically includes everything we do uh, has a retail price for $4,995 US dollars. Here's the thing. When we made an arrangement with, with Ryan Fitzwilliam that as he promoted this in the country and with Tennis South Africa, for a limited time, we would actually charge half of what we charge everywhere else in the world. So we're actually charging half of what we do everywhere else in the world right now in South Africa. So uh, we don't know how much longer this is gonna go on. It's not gonna go on forever. But if you like what you hear today, then it's really a great opportunity to move forward with the program. It's a one-time fee and it's a, again, it's a lifetime membership. So now uh, I'm gonna open up for questions and answers. And what I'm going to do is as I'm, as I'm ask, answering questions, I am going to post a link for you to see uh, what that program includes if you were to move forward. 
And then I'm just, I'm gonna go to questions and answers. Give me one second here. And so the, the reality is that, so for some of you, you've been looking for something like this. And if you have, and you're ready to move forward, then, then do so. And if you're not ready to move forward, that's fine. I mean, this is just a simple opportunity. Also, another thing you could do, some of you like this and say, you know, Oscar, but I have lots of questions and I'm not ready to, to, to move forward like that. That's fine. So if, if that's your situation, all you have to do is in the chat box on a private message, you can also say, hey, Oscar, I'm, I'm interested. Can you please reach out to me? And what we will have is we will have uh, someone reach out to you. Uh, most uh, someone reach out to you to answer all your questions and to help you with the process. So again, if, if this is something that you think you would like to do, uh, just just me just messages messages back. So here are a couple questions. Let's let's go through the questions. Do students need a specific prerequisite school subjects when applying? Absolutely, absolutely. And we don't actually have time to get into all of that. But students do, the NCAA and the NAIA require certain core courses for you to uh, get recruited. And there's actually a whole guidance and a whole manual that tells you what core courses those are. What I can tell you is that for most of you, if you are studying uh, conventional education, you usually will have no problem. If some of you are doing online schooling, uh, we need to make sure that you are uh, filling in the, per, uh, the prerequisites. So one of the things that we do is, as we help you navigate the NCAA process, we actually make sure that you are going to have the prerequisites. And if you don't, we let you know what those are. Now, there's no way that I can get into all that right now because it, it is a little bit complicated when it comes to the maths and and, and the different core courses that you have to take. But the, the answer is yes, uh, you do have to be aware that there is specific uh, prerequisites and be aware and we help you. Again, we're a step-by-step we're a -step -step process that guides that helps you with that whole entire process uh, at any time through the program. Let me see if we have any more questions here. If there are any further questions, if you could just please uh, put them on the the chat, I will I will leave uh, the next you know sixty seconds uh, for that. And what I will tell you also is that mom and dad, if you're listening to this and 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 again you're you're struggling with there's a lot of unanswered questions. Again, I'm not saying that you have to have all the answers. I have been doing and helping student athletes for 20 some years, almost 30 years. I'm 44 years old. I actually started helping kids when I was like 22 years old. And today I'm, I'm the president of, of, of one of the major companies, uh, the leader that does this for international students around there. What I can tell you, what separates a family that does not get this opportunity from that, that does is simply taking action and not thinking about it too much and wanting to have every question answered. In other words, what I'm saying, it's never going to be the right time to get started. Some people are always waiting for that right time, the right time in the economy, the right time that their, that their son or daughter says, okay, I'm 100% ready, the right time that their coach tells them, the right time where, where there's no fires to turn off in maybe their business or their or their personal life, there's never gonna be a right time. The right time is when opportunity happens. Remember when I said earlier that, that there's no such thing as luck? Well, luck is simply taking action when opportunity comes. And right here, you have a great opportunity to take an action step for your son or daughter. And actually, a, a reduced price if that were to be it, but the point being is even if you're not ready to do that and you have a lot of answered, unanswered questions, what I want to do is, is, is make you to take action, ask questions, reach out to us, put something in the chat, reach out to Ryan Fitzwilliam, reach out to Tennis South Africa. Is there, if there's any information that we can help you with, do so. Because if you take action, chances are your son or daughter is going to get recruited. Okay, so with that said, I see no more questions in the chat. So that means two things. Either you're bored. <laughs> 
no one's listening because I, so for some reason, maybe I'm not even being heard. Or three, my presentation was so good that there's no questions. So unless there's no more questions, uh, oh, we have some questions coming in. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, let's 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 have some fun here. Would this price be per child or per family? This is per child. So if you have uh, two children, yes, it's two different services because you have to realize it's two different processes. Most likely, your both of your kids have different rankings and want to study to something different and different abilities and different grades. So most likely, unless they're clones, uh, you are going to need two different processes. Uh, that, but here's the nice thing about it. We do give a substantial discount for the second uh, son or daughter. So that's something that, again, we can reach out to you and, and make sure that we give you and help you out financially to do that. I know it's difficult uh, with two families, so with two person families, but this is a per person fee because it is a our service is completely individualized, personalized for each and every family. In other words, no two programs are the same. Uh, we have technology and we have a great customer service where everyone, our, our success is that it doesn't matter where you are, you get awesome service directly from the company. Like we don't work with franchisees and we don't, you know, have local agents and local, everything that happens in, in your program is going to happen directly from the United States from us. So everything's very personalized to fit your needs. Uh, do you only do tennis or do you sit with golf scholarships? We're probably uh, the company that assists most golfers, most tennis players, and most international soccer players in any company in the world. I would say that tennis and golf are incredible strengths of us. We have some of the top golfers in the, pro in the world in our program. Famous go golfers like Luke Donald uh, have used our program. Uh, we have kids from all over the world, uh, kids that play the junior world, the optimists, they're in our program. So yes, we have very, 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 uh, have an incredible experience in golf, just like we do in tennis, and if you're a kid in soccer as well, but we do every sport because we've been doing this for 30 years. What is the average time people start the process is playing, um, process is playing an important, the average time people start the process is really two years ahead of high school graduate. I would say that's the average time. So right now, most of the families enrolling in our program are 2022s. We do have 2023s and 2024s that enroll in our program because they're very proactive. Now, if you're asking yourself, well, if I've already been, uh, uh, if I've already graduated or I'm a 2020, is it too late? You're, the answer is you're behind. That window of opportunity is closing very quickly. You need to take action immediately so that we can help you. And yes, we can do things in a microwave and do them quick, but it's gonna take obviously more work on your part but you have to you have to get started today and i mean today 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 because that door that window does close and there is uh, rules in the united states that about the eligible eligibility and how uh, much you can delay enrollment so you have to get started today if that is your situation um so that's a very quick question if you're doing online schooling there are there are actually um, online high schools that you can do in the United States. We actually partner with an online high school. We can reach out to you if you'd like to do that. We actually have something called the Education Academy that is actually a 100% fully accredited uh, high school in the United States that, that we, uh, we serve for our, for our clients. So I, I'm not saying you have to do that one. There's many others. What I'm saying is if you're doing online schooling, uh, it would be a big benefit to do one they already takes into account the core curriculum that you have to do to play college tennis. So yes, the one that we work with um, it does that. So it is very important that, that, that online school, there's nothing wrong with online school. I wanna be very clear, many of our clients do that. It's very important though to be aware of what the, those core courses are. Okay. Uh, so anyway, someone's asking again about the curriculum, the exact curriculum. That is, th those are questions that have to be answered on a really per personal basis. And so we'll reach out to you uh, simply because it, it has a lot to do with your, you know, with, 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 your, with you in particular. Personalized program, 
while there are core courses, it is just very important that we make sure that you, you have the right thing. And that is part of the process and part of the program that we do, by the way. Okay, so any more questions? Let me see if I missed any of them. Let me see if I missed any questions. Okay, so as I let you go, I am going to, um, I am going to post that link that I promised you in case you are ready to get started or you want to see more about what the program includes. Or if you're, if you're ready to get started, you can simply uh, register. There's the link. Uh, you can simply click on that link. I'm going to let you go unless there's more questions. But again, if this is something that you've been looking for, if you, this is something that you're ready to get started, two, two things, you can ask us to contact you in a private message or everyone, or you can click on that link and simply get started. The whole process can be done online. Once you do that, we're going to reach out and make sure and take you step by step. Everything's on that link I just mentioned. So before I let you go, I promised you 60 minutes and I'm five minutes late. Uh, I just want to thank again, uh, Tennis South Africa for the opportunity to bring this to you. I want to thank again, everyone that's worked to make this happen for you. And I'm sure it's not the last time we'll be in touch with you. And I hope that this was a valuable time for you and that you've learned um, you know, many, many good things about playing college, but certainly that a lot of those nits, maybe a lot of the lack of information uh, is, is, no, is no longer there. So is there one more question? Something about uh, ITFs? Okay, perfect. So, so yeah, okay, the question was answered. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, those are some of the questions that we can attend to next time. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you very much for your time. You have a great night. Ryan keeps telling me I need to go to South Africa. When I go, I know that now I have uh, close to 60 homes I can stay with. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Bye-bye.